All right, since Nano starts tomorrow, this week I'm going to be talking about exactly why I don't do Nano and what the good, the bad, and the ugly are about NaNoWriMo. First off, the good. I love Nano's community. I love the engagement. I love the fun. I think Nano is an excellent experience for writers, and it's one every writer should have at least once. So I'm not talking anything bad about Nano. I don't do it myself, and we'll get into why, but I don't have anything bad to say about it, and I think the organization is wonderful. A lot of people don't know that Nano actually has a parent company who does support NaNoWriMo and who does a lot of the work preparing for it. I think they do a great job, so please don't misunderstand any of my critiques of NaNoWriMo. Secondly, one of my favorite things about NaNo is the engagement. People encourage each other, they celebrate each other's word counts, everyone gets really excited around NaNo, and they really, like, just amps up their writing to 11. And I am all about that. It makes me so happy to see people encouraging one another and engaging and just being part of this whole experience that NaNo is every year. I'm a big fan of that. Furthermore, it's fun. NaNoWriMo can be a huge amount of fun. It can be a great way to, like, just dip your toes in and try things or explore types of writing you might not do otherwise. It's just a great time. And I'm a really big fan of that. Like, I think everyone should do it at least once, as I said. And the fun element cannot be understated. I think the fun element is what makes NaNo so successful. It also provides a platform to help people cultivate good habits. It creates dedicated writing time for people who might otherwise not make space for it in their daily lives. And I think that that is all a beautiful and wonderful thing. So that is why I'm a big fan of NaNoWriMo and why I think you should do it at least once. Now, let's kind of check out for a second and move to the bad. The bad of NaNoWriMo is not because NaNoWriMo, the company, is problematic. The bad of NaNoWriMo is not because the experience is negative, inherently. It's not because I think it's problematic. It's because there are inherent issues for some folks with the way NaNo is structured. For one, the goal of 50,000 words in a month, that's pretty lofty. It requires you to write about 16 to 1700 words every single day without a break for the month of November. For some folks, that's an awful lot of words. And for some folks, a thousand words is a lot. And on average, a professional writer, from what I understand, and this is from research from myself, from people I know, most of us write about a thousand words a day when we are in writing mode. Some people write way more than that. Like, I have written 10,000 words in a day before, but it did require me to uh, miss important things like uh, food, uh, going to the bathroom, paying any attention to my family at all, drinking water, uh, anything except writing. So I can do it, but it's not a good space for me to live in. So I don't recommend anybody live in that space because it's, it's, it's a lot. But a thousand words a day is considered mostly achievable. And while I write very quickly, I can do 10,000 words, not 10,000 words. Wow. That was a verbal typo. I can do about a thousand words in about half an hour if I really know what I'm doing and the words just happen. So, it, while it doesn't seem like a lot for someone like me who does this professionally, for some people, they're like, I'm lucky if I get a hundred words a day in. And the problem with that word count is people sometimes feel like that's the barrier to entry into being a professional writer or to being an author, is you have to be able to beat Nano and have to put out a certain number of words per day. That isn't true. It's, it's not true at all. Not even a little bit. But some people end up feeling that way, and I think the word count can be a little intimidating for folks. Now, that isn't to say it's a bad thing. If you really find that kick in the pants, the, the 50,000 words to be a good goal for you, then go for it. But if you find the 50,000 words to be a little overwhelming for Nano, you can always drop that word count to something that's more manageable to you, like 30,000, which is about a thousand words a day. That isn't unreasonable. Now, another problem with the word count is sometimes when you're in the nano zone, I have done nano, I have won nano multiple times. Sometimes when you're in that zone, 
you get locked into this writing thing, which is great, but like the 10,000 word sprint, I, when I was doing it, didn't really do other things in my life sometimes. Like, I would neglect important things to make sure I got the word count down. Now, some of that might be my black and white thinking because I'm autistic. Because I was like, no, this is what I have to do. And anything that is stopping me from what I have to do is bad, and it must be eradicated from my life. And so it's, some of that might be related to that. It's entirely possible. Like, I'm not going to pretend it's not. However, I don't want to... Uh, there are lots of neurodivergent writers out there because it att the profession attracts us like cats to a can of tuna. I don't want anybody to feel that if you can't do that, it's a bad thing. But... It, it did lead me down some paths where I neglected some relationships that were really important to me. I wasn't doing things like taking care of certain things that I needed to get done that day because I was like, well, I haven't gotten my word count and I'm going to sit here until I do. And sometimes the words didn't happen. And so it could kind of lead to burnout for some people. And if the words don't happen and you sit there staring at your screen for three hours, tr punishing yourself for not writing, that's not healthy. And it's not in the spirit of what Nano believes either. Like, Nano does not agree with that and doesn't support that behavior, so don't do it. It's not what Nano's asking of you, so just remember that. The other things that can are, be bad about Nano or be bad about the way certain people interact with Nano is like this, perf this pressure to perform. You know, you have all these people around you, you've got this peer pressure, everyone's putting down words and posting word counts, and if you miss that day, or if you don't have any words, it can oftentimes feel like a really dramatic failure on your part, like you're letting the team down. It's not true, but it can feel that way sometimes. And that can lead to stress and anxiety and burnout and other things I mentioned when I talked about word counts. That is an actual problem that can occur. And it, it sucks. Like, I would never encourage anybody to feel that way. And I know that the founders of Nano don't in any way want people to feel that way. But it is a thing that can happen, particularly since a lot of people aren't doing Nano inside the NaNoWriMo website and in that ecosystem where they have the support, they've got groups, they've got meetings, they've got all sorts of stuff and all kinds of support and they send out emails all the time with all of these things talking about how NaNoWriMo is supposed to be fun and positive, but some people try and do it in a vacuum because they don't know there's a community and trying to do it in the vacuum can lead to these feelings of being left out, this pressure, this letting the team down, because they don't realize that that isn't actually how NaNoWriMo works. So that is a thing I've seen. I've also seen authors who are writers. I'm not going to say authors. I've seen writers who have tried to do NaNo and failed and said, well, I guess I can't be a professional writer then. All of my hopes and dreams of being an author are gone because I'm incapable of doing this thing that everyone else is doing. And they think NaNoWriMo, like I said earlier, is the barrier to entry into being a professional author. That isn't true. NaNo doesn't say it's true. Nobody says it's true. But I've seen people feel that way because, again, they're doing this in the ecosystem of maybe like Twitter or Facebook, and they or they're trying to do it alone and don't realize that there are resources and people out there who are willing to help them and work with them through this. But I've seen it happen, and I've seen authors who otherwise would be very good at what they do end up saying, well, maybe I shouldn't because I'm not good enough to do this. And that's really sad. Like, I've seen people drop out because they don't feel like they can write. Now, there is a community, and most of us will perform triage in those situations because we don't want anyone feeling that way. And the community of writers at large absolutely will embrace these people and help them feel better. But if they're doing it alone, it becomes this kind of sadness, and I hate seeing that. And then finally, there are folks who, after NaNo, start thinking about publication immediately. Then there are the folks who, after NaNo, start thinking about publication immediately and worry about it. And it's a little premature, particularly these folks who have never written a book before. If you haven't done the thing before and you're a brand new author, which Nano is kind of geared to get people into the writing zone and get them, you know, the butt in the seat, get the words down. Once you've finished Nano and you have this 50,000 word manuscript, a lot of people don't really understand that there are next steps between writing the manuscript and publishing the manuscript that have to happen 
before you can get your book out there. I have worked with a number of authors who wrote a book during NaNoWriMo and kind of got stuck because they're like, okay, cool, I have this book, time to send it to an editor, and they don't realize that there are other pieces in between, which can either be expensive or I, I frequently coach people through that. I don't, you know, if I if their book isn't ready to be edited yet, I will tell them and I'll work with them on it and then we can get it to that place. But for some of them that feels embarrassing or they get angry or they feel like they're inadequate somehow because their book wasn't good enough because first drafts are never, never submittable to public. Like nobody sees my first draft, not even my husband with whom I'm writing. No one gets to see the first draft until I've gone through and fixed some of the spelling errors or like looked at the plot holes and been like, oh, gotta fix that problem. I, I do that before anybody sees it. Because honestly, I don't want people to see that. <laughs> I don't think anybody, anybody does. So at the very least, do a first pass of your own edits before anyone else sees the book. And that does lead us into the what is the ugly conversation part of this diatribe I have about NaNo. Um, one of the things that happens is most indie publishers and agents will tell you that December sometimes gets real interesting because we get this flood of people who wrote a book during NaNoWriMo and then start trying to submit it immediately. And that does make December kind of interesting because the inboxes really get kind of exciting around that time period and there's a lot of cool, but this isn't ready for publication that happens. And also, if you're trying to submit a book in December, for any reason, there's a chance that your query might get washed out by the nano queries. And I say that because I've been in the publishing industry for 15 years. I have been in the publishing industry in indie publishers for a long time. And December, if people know your publisher exists or you're open to queries, December gets a little hairy. And that's, I th now all of this is my own cause and effect. I think that's why, but it's my personal experience. And I don't blame Nano for this. I don't blame new authors who don't know better for this. It's just a fact of life. Kind of like how you buy spring seeds in March. Or you start seeing Christmas stuff before Halloween. Anyway, fact of life. Um, the thing is, is too many authors, when they finish Nano, don't know what to do with their book. NaNoWriMo, the organization, they put out that information. Like once you're in the NaNo ecosphere, you know, if you have a, an account on their website and you sign up for their emails and you're working with the people and doing the things in the official NaNo system, they tell you. They, they don't hide the lead. They're, they don't bury the lead. But too many people don't know that that exists and they do NaNo in a vacuum and then they're like, cool, I wrote 50,000 words. Now what? And they kind of freeze. And in those cases, those folks either go to social media to ask other writers for help. Sometimes they'll go online and look. And that is a good and a bad thing because in this world where anybody can make a YouTube channel, hi, here I am, you have people who give really bad advice or people who don't know what they're talking about speaking as if they do know what they're talking about. And you end up with this result of new people getting bad advice that hurts their career in the long run. I see it all the time. I, I made an angry TikTok about it the other day. If you're on my TikTok channel, you know which one I'm talking about. And I see it so frequently where people pile on and give awful advice to newbie writers not because they're bad people or because they're mean or trying to hurt the writer. That isn't why. They're usually doing it because they're trying to help, but they don't know. It's sort of like being chronically ill and you have this one friend who's like, have you ever tried a juice cleanse? It really solves my insert problem here. And or have you tried eating turmeric for every single meal ever? Or have you tried going gluten free? I'm not saying that those things don't work for some people. But in the writing community, I equate all of that inexperienced advice with people telling folks like me, have you tried doing a juice cleanse? I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. 
I have other health difficulties. I've got chronic migraines, all of which are like, I had major surgery on my shoulder this year because it was dislocating and wouldn't stop kind of level of problems. And I've had people tell me, you should just eat turmeric. It will solve your problems. Turmeric doesn't solve anybody's problems. It might help with minor joint inflammation, and I like turmeric as a spice. I enjoy Indian food, but it doesn't solve something like Ehlers-Danlos. And that's the same kind of level, like, weapons-grade bad advice we're talking here. Advice like, well, this is the editor's problem to fix. No. Unless you want to spend a lot of money. No. Uh, your publisher will do all the marketing for you. That old chestnut, people in college learn that and tell each other that. The marketer, the, the, the publisher, will not do all of your marketing for you. Your job as a writer is not exclusively to write the first draft and pass it off to the next person to be their problem while you rake in the cash. That is not how publishing works. And it is never how publishing has worked. Not once. I know. I've spoken to people who've been in the publishing industry since rocks were soft. And it's never been true for them either. That is not how the industry works. I don't know where this idea comes from. But it isn't true. It's advice like that that gets propagated in the social media ecosystem. And then these newbie writers who finish their first book and are really excited about it go into these places and get all this bad advice and it takes a while for them to find actual professionals to talk to sometimes who will tell them the truth. And by then, they're, it hurts because they realize that everything they've learned is not true. And that sucks. And it can breed a lot of resentment and problems. So that is one of the things I also see post-nano, is new writers flooding into writers' groups and getting awful information. And then, finally, you have the predators. So post-nano is a feeding frenzy on certain websites. I'm going to say, like, Fiverr, for example. I'm not saying Fiverr is a bad website, but there are a lot of people on there who claim to be editors or cover designers or typesetters or whatever it is and have no idea what they're doing or they know they don't know what they're doing and are charging industry premium prices for it and are hurting writers by giving them subpar advice. I have seen so many predators and I mean like predators and like predator editor predators out there who are damaging writers by saying post nano feeding frenzy time let's grab all the newbies and edit their book badly and get like two hundred dollars for it and then never see them again that happens a lot and the person who has to triage those poor authors who've gotten burned by other editors is people like me and they come to us with a manuscript that has had errors introduced or wasn't edited properly, or they were told it was right, and it never sells, and people, like, lambast it in the reviews for being badly edited, they end up in my inbox. And first off, they get sticker shock when they realize that editing is not cheap. It should never be cheap. Anybody who's charging $200 to edit a full-length manuscript is either inexperienced, which is okay. The inexperienced ones who are, who are honest about that saying, I don't have a lot of experience. I don't feel right charging industry premium prices for what I do because I'm not experienced. They're okay because you know what you're getting. You know that you're not getting someone like me. And that's all right. I do not have anything bad to say about the people who are honest. But the people who say, yeah, I'll edit your manuscript for 200 bucks and it'll be fine and lie to these poor people or the folks who do cover design and just steal images off of Google and shaft the author by creating a really awful cover that is also unusable and copyright infringement is a real problem. And it happens far too often. So there's a flood of that following NaNoWriMo. And I think that that is also one of the things that we as a writing culture need to change. We need to make sure that doesn't keep happening. Because it, it damages new writers, and we love them. New writers are the lifeblood of the writing community. If we don't get new writers when the old ones die off, what's going to happen to us? <laughs> Nothing good. We vanish. So that is more or less my breakdown of NaNoWriMo. So in the end, to sum everything up, NaNoWriMo is great. I encourage you to enjoy it and try it and experience it. 
I don't do it myself because, frankly, I don't write well under that volume of pressure. If I do produce a manuscript for Nano, which I have, it's always garbage. It is inevitably a mess because writing that much that quickly isn't how my process works. I can write a lot at once when I'm in the right headspace, but for me, in order to get into that headspace, usually I am at my family's cabin, which has no internet and no TV and no phone connection, and I'm just up there in my own little world, which I can't do in November because it's shut down for winter. I live in New England, and the cabin is in New York, northern New York. And so this time of year, we shut it down because heating gets expensive and it'll freeze if nobody's up there taking care of it. I can't do that so well in November. And I also have obligations because given what I do, I do book coaching, all sorts of other stuff. My industry gets really busy in November. I also have familial obligations like Thanksgiving and stuff, you know, birthdays at the end of October. That said, if you want to do nano, do it. Just do it healthily. Recognize that NaNoWriMo does not define your ability to be a professional author. NaNoWriMo does not define your ability to be a good writer. NaNoWriMo doesn't define your publishing career or your future. It defines absolutely none of that. It is, however, an excellent time to connect with other authors, to have fun together as a group. It is a perfect time to share in the joy that is that experience, and I frankly love that for authors, but just recognize that it does come with some pitfalls and you need to be cautious of them. And monitor your mental health during November if you're going to do nano. Don't burn yourself out, don't neglect important things, and create a sustainable writing practice for yourself. I'm going to be talking a bit about sustainable writing practices in some future videos coming up, but that is going to be the key here, creating a sustainable writing practice for yourself that fits your life personally. Because let's be honest, everyone's lives are a little hectic, a little chaotic, a little unpredictable, and so the key is not going to be a one-size-fits-all writing plan for everyone, it's going to be finding out what works for you. Thanks. Have a great week.